I'm going to tell you the story about a watchmaker and her battle against the issue of scale. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a small village deep in the countryside of rural Switzerland. This small village was on first impression no different to any other dotted in the valleys and hills of the nearby cantons. But there was one thing that made this village a little bit special. Just off the main street, down a narrow staircase was a small workshop. In that workshop was a lady who was known simply as the watchmaker. Her skills were unsurpassed with her exquisite artistry from the leather strap to the minute and hour hands to the glass front. She made the most beautiful watches. Mrs. Watkins sourced, smelted, poured, cut, filed and polished every watch by hand. Each watch made bespoke for an expectant customer. These watches were just as much art as they were function. Her craft was known far and wide, with many people just coming just to watch her work. The popularity of her watches made for a full book of orders, with many customers willing to wait months for their watch to arrive. With this freedom, it allowed her to spend time with her family, often taking holidays at a whim, only to then return and throw herself back into her passion, re-energized and rejuvenated. It was a perfect life, idyllic even. But then something began to change, slowly at first, but something grew steadily across the globe, eating up the ground, first a drip, then a trickle, and then a torrent. It washed over the earth and changed everything, for everyone. The change even affected Mrs. Watkins. Her once busy workshop became quiet. Visitors became less frequent. Over time, less people came to watch her work. Orders slowed, a few at first and then none. Customers now wanted choice and price, with many traveling to the nearby city instead of her workshop to buy a watch there and then. But the story isn't just about watches. Slowly but surely, industry upon industry moved from a craftsperson capable of building a one-off exquisite masterpiece to an individual crafting a single item within a complex system. No longer could a worker work when they wanted, they were now on an assembly line, each person critical to the work of the person before and after. The conveyor belt of progress had moved us to a standardized working week, nine to five, punch in and punch out. The revolution changed the world. Progress had begun and has continued to develop. Bigger, more, faster, now are the words we hear. With every new technological advancement, there is the promise of more flexi time, more leisure time. But in reality, up to this point at least, it has just meant more work crammed into less. But what of the watchmaker? Well, as with everything, revolutions have both positive and negative traits. After the initial frenzy of the new processes, the appreciation grew for what went before. People began to hunt the exquisite, the one-off and the handmade. Mrs. Watkins slowly built her business back up with the help of her daughter and her daughter's daughter. They made the most of new powerful tools. These tools allowed them to share their skills to the world through video and text. Her community grew, and with that community came a new audience that longed for her one-off bespoke watches. I hope you've enjoyed our latest fable, which tells the moment a small change in how we work radically altered how we all live. Do let us know in the comments what you thought, and do consider subscribing. It helps us get the videos out to more people. Oh yes, and one more thing, why this video? Well, at Hoffi, we've been experimenting in new ways of working over the last year or so. We started initially with a three month trial of a four day week, and this has now been going for over a year now. It's gone pretty well. It's not perfect by any means. It's not as flexible as the watchmakers, but it has allowed us a little bit more balance between life, work, and play. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.